All right, let's talk about my tradition. So for this tradition, it's located in an Italian city called Ivria. Now, and this is called the Battle of the Oranges. So how did it start? It started because of townsfolks was trying to uh, get away from a ruling of an evil dude. So this is a way in order to commemorate for this. Now for this, for the Battle of the Oranges, we will need safety measures. So the things that we need would be a helmet or a goggles or anything that you want to be protected from because this will get a little messy because we'll be using a lot of oranges now but in this we, this consists of different teams at most at nine teams in the city but for now we're just gonna only need another team which we will have Ramon will be on the goggles team I will be the helmet team so that's what we're gonna do. We're get, it's basically just throwing oranges at each other. Just an example like La Tomatina, because this is one of the biggest food fights that they have in Europe. So let's get started with our activity. Before we get started, please ask for adult supervision because this might cause a lot of mess. So we're gonna have two teams. Ramon will be there, I will be here. So the oranges are lined up, just like dodgeball. And uh, well, we're gonna start like in dodgeball where mo uh, whoever gets the most oranges and then we start throwing them at each other. That's basically what this is all about. So let's get ready for this activity. All right. One, two, three. Construction paper. 
Now for this, you actually only need construction paper that's about half of the original paper. So you'll just fold the paper in half, hamburger style, and cut that piece of construction paper along the line that you folded. And now we have a piece of construction paper that's half of the original construction paper. Next, we have to fold this half in half again. And we'll take the shorter sides and fold them together hamburger style. And then we will make a crease along the half. Are you ready for the next step? Awesome, let's do it. So, next, keep your paper folded have it on the table and grab your stencil. You'll want to put your stencil on the piece of paper and I'll show you this up close. So you want to put the piece of paper and here's your stencil and we're just going to trace along the stencil onto our construction paper. Make sure that the nose part of the stencil is on the side with the fold not on the side where it's open. So make sure this end is where there's a fold. So now we'll just trace along the stencil. And the stencil might not completely fit onto the paper. If you need to, just shift the stencil a little bit to the left so that the nose hangs over the edge a little bit. That's okay. We'll just trace. Do, do, do. All right, are you all done tracing the edge of the stencil? You are? Awesome work. Now, we need to draw a spot for our eyes. Let me show you up close. So here's us and how we traced our mask outline. We just need to pick a spot to put the eyes. So I'm gonna pick about here, and then I'll just make a little curve, and another curve. And you can make the eyes bigger or smaller, depending on whatever you want. So now that I'm sitting down, I'm gonna make the eye a little bit bigger. There we go. So I have this. Next, we get to cut it out. So we'll take our scissors and carefully cut along the outside line that you drew. For this part, you may need an adult to help you or an older sibling, so be sure to ask for help if you need it. Now, as we are cutting out our mask, let me tell you a little bit about the history of this tradition. In Venice, during the 13th century, it was common for the people to wear masks to hide who they were. This was so that during the month of December, all the way until the holiday called Lent, which is near Easter, people of all different classes could come together. This means that people who wouldn't normally get to see each other would get to see each other, but they would hide who they were. This ended up becoming a tradition, even though this started in the 13th century, which was almost over 2,500 years ago. Today, the festival is, ma is mainly known for the elaborate designs or the very detailed designs of the masks that are worn along with the costume. Are you cutting along the edge of the stencil? Great work, you got this. All right, are you all done cutting along the edge? 
If not, you can always cause you can always pause this video if you need to. Now, let me show you the next step. So, our next step is to cut out our eye. Of course, not a real eye. This eye on paper. And so, we're just going to sort of fold this a little bit and take our scissors and make a little cut so that we can sort of poke our scissors through. There we go. So now I can poke the scissor through and I'm just gonna cut along to the edge, cut along to the edge, and then carefully cut along the line that we drew for our eyes and cut out this piece. Almost there. Ding! Yay, we did it! Now be sure to ask an adult for help for this part if you need it. Now we're almost there. Here's the fun part. We get to decorate. So that for this part, you can be absolutely as creative as you want to. So for me, I'm just gonna pick some markers and color. However, you could add paint, you could add colored pencils. You could do whatever you want to decorate your mask. You could write different expressions. You could have a happy mask or you could try and do a serious mask. Whatever emotion or whatever colors you want to use, go for it. And also, be sure to pause this video for more time if you need it. You take as long to decorate as you want to. All right, I only did a little bit of decoration, so be sure to take more time if you need to. But I'm gonna show you the next and last step to complete your mask. So for this part, we need scissors again, and also string. For the string, you wanna find the edge and you wanna cut a pretty long piece, um, enough to definitely wrap around your head and more, a little bit extra. So I'm gonna cut this amount. And now we need our masks and also scissors. So let me show you this part up close. For this part, we want to go to the edge of our mask and make a small cut. However, you don't want this cut to go through to the edge. You just want to make a little hole. You're going to do that on both sides. And if you happen to have a hole puncher, that might be even better to use here than scissors. So now we don't really need the scissors anymore, so I'm gonna put these down. And for this next part, you need string. So for the string, we're going to, you guessed it, put it into the hole here on the edge and pull it through. And this part can be a little tricky, so let me try that again. It can help to sort of twist the string um, if you're having trouble getting all of the string through. So, oops. Yep, that was a mistake. I accidentally ripped my mask a little bit. That's okay though. Let me show you on the other side. If that happens, we can use tape or glue to fix it. So I'm gonna go do that right after. Okay. So carefully, so you don't rip it. There we go, there's the string. And then we'll just tie this twice. And tie it carefully because if you pull too tight, you might rip the paper. So we'll do a knot and we'll do another knot. Yay! Now, I'm gonna go grab tape 
to fix this side and be right back. All right, I successfully have my tape, so I'm just gonna flip this over and I'm actually gonna cut this tape a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna just put the tape, let's go right about here. And then I'm gonna go here. Okay, there we go, good as new. Now, let me try this again. Going to make a little hole for my string. And now going to do the other side. There we go, success. All right, now here's the part where you can get the string to the right length for your head. So for this, sort of put the mask on your face and pull your yarn through. Till it's about the right length for your face. So for me, it's staying about here. And so at this point, I'm going to make a double knot. And then I'll cut off the excess string. All right, I believe the mask has been completed. Amazing work, everyone. Now on to another very interesting tradition with Ramon and Louise. in a message sent to the Gloucester town crier in which it was already a pretty set in stone tradition. Now, others have said it dates back to the 1700s. That's about 300 years of cheese. That's some pretty old cheese if you ask me. So now I'll be showing you this festival activity by running and rolling down this hill. So for this activity, you only need two materials. You need a cheese and at least one other person you can race with. Speaking of which, hey you, come over here. Hello. Guest star today is Luis and we'll be rolling down for the cheese. Now remember, safety is our top priority. So do not roll down or run down a hill that you cannot do safely. If needed, wear the proper safety equipment like I have here today. It is also important to be under adult supervision at all times if you do participate in the race. Now, let's get started with the cheese race. On the count of three. One, two, and three. Where's the cheese? <laughs> the world be spinning. The world do be spinning. <laughs> 